Use the system in the way that works for you. One good calibration is more than enough. What's my glucose? You are 124 and rising. Low blood sugar sucks. We're gonna share with you eight tips for Dexcom G6 that will take your CGM game to the next level. Let's go. <laughs> I recently started with the Dexcom G6 and right after I applied my first sensor I immediately started connecting with more experienced Dexcom users. I wanted to learn how I can best utilize this continuous glucose monitor and what Dexcom G6 tips and hacks are out there that I can share with all of you. One of the people I connected with was Crystal who runs the Diabetes Strong YouTube channel. Crystal and I put together a few Dexcom G6 tips and techniques which we are going to share with you in this video. Thank you. Tom and hi everyone I am Crystal Orum as Tom mentioned I am the founder of Diabetes Strong. I've been on with type 1 diabetes since 1997 so that's coming up I'm 24 years. I currently live in the United States in sunny California with my well snoring fur baby and my husband but I'm actually born and raised in Denmark that's where I got my diagnosis and I still speak Danish so hi Edison. Thanks a lot for the introduction and sharing your story, Crystal. I'm so happy to have you join me on my channel. So let's get right into the first Dexcom G6 tip. Take it away. When you are on the Dexcom G6 system, there's actually quite a few ways to watch your data, watch your blood sugar. So one of them is to use your receiver. It doesn't have to be pink, this is just a sleeve. This is usually in a drawer. Where I see my glucose is on my phone. This is just, uh, see if I can get it out of the light. This is just a Dexcom app. What is really cool about this is that if you have an iPhone, you can install Siri. And let's say that I'm driving and I can't touch my phone or whatever. Let's just put my phone here and I can go, hey Siri, what's my glucose? Okay, viewing. You're 124 and rising. So that's pretty cool. I like that feature. That's a newer feature. It's only working with uh, the G6. Wow, this is so cool. I'm going to set this up right after we film this video. If you have an Apple Watch, you can also watch your reading on that. I do not. I do and it works really great. Sorry for interrupting again. I have a Fitbit. This is a Fitbit Versa. So what I did was I downloaded a clock face called Glance and that allows me to, here you go, see my glucose readings directly on my watch. It's not an official Dexcom app but it works. The Dexcom G6 is approved for 10 day wear and that's about how long I wear it. So I'll try and move it around on my body to just give my skin a break. My favorite placement is here on my upper arm. So I'll do, you know, side to side, but I also sometimes wear it on my stomach. Um, I've worn it on my lower back or my thighs as well. But again, my arms is my favorite placement is the best readings. I don't pull it off. It's technically not approved for arm wear in the US, meaning it's not FDA approved. If you're nervous about that, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that it's actually CE marked for wear on the arm. So that means that if you're in a country that goes by CE mark, you are not off label if you wear it either on your arm or on your stomach. I can confirm that I'm in Switzerland and we go by CE mark, so we're not off label. I think the most important part is use the system in the way that works for you. What I mean by that is, for example, the alarms. Only set alarms that make sense for you. Don't set a 180 alarm if you're not going to do anything about your blood sugars once they hit 180. If you're not going to correct to get it down to 180, you're only going to correct when you get to 200, then set the alarm at 200. Just having your Dexcom go off with a lot of alarms that you're not going to do anything with, it's just going to give you alarm fatigue and it's going to make you want to throw the system out the window. These were really amazing tips, Crystal. And let me add a few more. My first tip is more of a reminder because the Dexcom G6 is taking the glucose readings from the interstitial fluid. And the interstitial fluid readings will always be slightly lagging behind your readings from blood. So keep this in mind, especially in the moments when your glucose is rising or dropping sharply, because in those moments, those little lags might turn into quite a big difference between the sensor reading and the glucometer reading. Another tip I want to mention is calibrate your sensor when you see that the sensor readings are consistently higher or consistently lower than your glucometer readings. This should help you get more accurate readings from your Dexcom G6 sensor. You can calibrate directly in the Dexcom G6 app. Just keep in mind you should only calibrate when your blood glucose is stable. So don't calibrate if you just exercised, if you took 
fast-acting insulin or if you ate something within the past two to three hours because in those moments typically our blood glucose is not so stable and it's more likely to change and you should only calibrate when you see this stable line with no big jumps up or down and don't calibrate too much from my experience one good calibration is more than enough and it's much better than three bad calibrations my next tip is something I learned in the Dexcom G6 Facebook group after one of my Dexcom G6 sensors failed. Some people in the group mentioned that if you scan the sensor code instead of entering the code manually when you are starting the sensor, it might lead to sensor failures. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but since then I always enter my sensor code manually. And by the way, if you want, definitely join the Dexcom G6 Facebook group because it has 55,000 users and there is so much knowledge there. Definitely worth checking it out. Now, Crystal shared a few really helpful tips on how you can view your sensor data and I have one more it's actually a tip how you can not only view your data but automate your insulin delivery because you can view your readings on the Tandem's T-Slim X2 insulin pump so you actually don't even need a phone or a watch with you to see what your blood glucose is if you're using this insulin pump and you can also turn on the control IQ function on the pump and create a closed loop and the pump will start adjusting your insulin dosage depending on where your blood sugar is headed. I'm using this function myself and I'm loving it so far but more about that in another video because now it's time for the type 1 talks lightning round. I hope you are ready Crystal. Let's go! What's your favorite hypo treatment? My favorite low treatment? Actually glucose tabs. These are chocolate marshmallow and they're amazing. I found those on Amazon. And I know people hate on glucose tabs, but these are soft tabs and they actually taste good. And there's four in one of these packs. Insulin pen or insulin pump? So I'm team MDI, multiple daily injections all the way. I tried a pump, for me it ended up just being more work without better glucose control. I also do have access to something called the InPen, which is this beauty. It's a smart pen that basically has the same brains as a pump. I just have to do the injections myself. So it can help me calculate my doses. It keeps track of my track of my injections and all that good stuff. Libre or Dexcom? So Libre or Dexcom, you probably figured by now that I'm team Dexcom. I actually have tried a Libre. On me, unfortunately, it wasn't super accurate. I was wearing both my Dexcom and the Libre, plus was doing finger sticks and the Libre just came out short. Back then, you didn't have the alarms and alerts either, which was a huge downside to the system. I know this, no, some of the newer systems have those alerts but i'll probably not be switching over just yet several reasons i love the dexcom data it integrates with my in pen which is my smart insulin pen and i can get the readings on my watch and what's your favorite dexcom g6 site back of the arm what do you think is the most annoying thing about type 1 diabetes? The most annoying thing about diabetes, I say two things. Probably I ha always have to haul around all my gear. I never leave my home without, you know, at least glucose tabs and either my phone so I can see my glucose or a meter. And low blood sugars. Low blood sugar sucks. They're never pleasant. And Crystal, if you don't mind me asking, because you are so physically active, how many carbs you eat a day? That highly depends on what I'm in the mood for, what day it is. Sometimes 120 grams of carbs, sometimes 50, some days it's 300. I believe in moderation. I believe that the focus should be on living my life first and then adjusting my diabetes care. And it works pretty well. Totally agree with you, Crystal. And let's ask our viewers. Guys, what is your favorite Dexcom G6 tip that you think the other viewers absolutely need to know about? Let us know in the comments down below. And definitely go check out Crystal's channel. I will put a link to her channel as well as links to everything we talked about today in the description below. And now click on one of the videos on the screen right now to learn more Dexcom G6 tips and hacks. Thank you guys for tuning in. Zoe says hi.